All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week, had a good weekend, all that good stuff. It was a pretty crazy week in the market. Definitely had a lot of activity. First thing Monday, markets ripped, so that was pretty crazy. It was definitely a big breakout move, but overall, we did kind of come back down. I definitely had a way better week trading in the past couple weeks. So that was nice. Hopefully everybody had the same. If you tuned in last week, we had a pretty decent list, I would say. We had CLF calls on watch, which did dip into that demand zone we were looking at. Ended up rallying 5% off the bottom there and also held that up pretty good. So if you want, carry that CLF setup over into next week and add it to your list again this week. But we do have three new ones coming up. We also had J&J &J calls on watch. that had a nice breakout. Also ripped pretty hard off demand. Ran about 2 maybe 2.5% from that breakout. Really nice breakout so far. Definitely still has more room to run and then we did have one that didn't play out and that was the ebay puts ebay looked really good to flush last week it broke that uptrend line but overall we were looking for that 50 sma to break it did hold that up pretty well held the support and ripped back up also invalidated the breakdown ebay does have a pretty good resistance point in the way if you want to keep watching that maybe for downside but overall it does need to get back under that downtrend and overall it really needs to get under the 50 sma before it does anything big to the downside so clf and jnj &J did pretty good hopefully you were able to catch that and hopefully if you're still in clf it'll run even more because there's still some upside in my opinion it's still kind of close to the bottom and overall it has a lot of room to retrace so we were able to lock some winners last week finally so we had a spy put scalp i think i opened this on monday made about 27 percent on that this old oxy swing made about 25 percent on that this was actually from a trade ideas list video a couple weeks ago so every single setup we put out I mean, obviously, it's not always just going to go the first week I put it out. And this is kind of testimony to that. Same thing with hood puts here. This took a couple weeks. And I think this was from a list about two weeks ago. And I think Oxy was from about three weeks ago. So sometimes you just need to give the setups time and they will come into fruition. And then those NVIDIA puts that were down 16%. I believe it was down 16% when we were looking at this last week. Closed those for almost 30%. I made about 27 on that one. Really nice flush. I was just a tad bit early, but overall, I definitely thought it was way overextended. We had insider selling. We had about a 60% overextension over the nine EMA on the one month time frame. So overall, I mean, it was just vertical and it needed to cool down. So way better than the past couple weeks, as you can see. I mean, I showed you last week, I stopped out a couple times a week prior and overall, it just wasn't going that good the week prior. And finally, we got some winners locked in here. So that felt pretty good. I had a pretty good week. And for right now, I only have these open. I have some AAL calls. All these are smaller size. So I'm kind of okay with the drawdown so far. We have three months left on AAL. We got about a month left on QQQ puts. This is definitely going to need big downside to recover. And then also Baidu, which I got completely wrong. Still have about two months left on that. I'm not going to add to any of these. I would maybe add to AAL since I only put up about 300 bucks on this. These ones, I mean, this was 900 bucks and this was 800 bucks. And I only took one contract a piece on QQQ and Baidu, but AAL only $300 at risk so far. So maybe I could add to that. But for right now, I'm not going to add to any of these losers. Hopefully I'll be able to close them out for a win or a loss but really these two don't have that much value left. So I don't really see a point in closing it. If the market wants to pull back, I could have a hedge on QQQ. And then also China still looks pretty oversold and there's two months left on this. So not really ready to close these, even though they're down pretty aggressively. And that just kind of highlights the importance of starting out small, even if you're going to take a longer term position. I mean, I took this one about a month ago and I took this one about two weeks ago and they had a pretty good amount of time still on the expiration but either way start small so you can add later wait for him to get up a little bit kind of average into it instead of averaging down so yeah that's all i have open for right now but i'm gonna open some new stuff since we freed up all these winners right here i'm gonna open some new longer dated swings next week if i find anything that i like and before we go into our setups look over the economic calendar real quick it's actually pretty quiet up until thursday and friday you can see we just have a couple of Fed speakers on Monday. I don't think this is going to move the market much. Tuesday, we do have consumer confidence. So you can pay attention to that at 10. This can definitely move the market. We do have new home sales on Wednesday. That could move the market. It just needs to be an extreme reading. Thursday, a little bit more important. We do have GDP. So that's at 8.30. And then also pending home sales at 10. So GDP can definitely move us in the pre-market. Friday, onto more important data. We do have the PCE, which is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. They prefer this over the CPI. So it can definitely move the market. We want to see that continued trend lower in inflation. We want to be able to see a rate cut maybe this year. And right now on the dot plot from the last Fed meeting, they only have one rate hike priced in for this 
here on their dot plot. So we went from like seven to eight rate cuts in 2024, now only to one. It's just been a slippery slope. And as the time goes on, we realize that maybe we're not going to be cutting rates anytime soon. So we definitely want to see that PCE in lower. And then we also have a PMI reading at 945 from Chicago and also at 10 a.m. consumer sentiment. So consumer sentiment definitely causes a knee jerk reaction as soon as it drops at 10. Just really depends on how extreme the reading is, but it's good for day trading and taking little gamble trades or lotto trades at 10. So that's really it. Most important going to be GDP and PCE. Second most important, probably the consumer sentiment and also consumer confidence at 10 on Tuesday. All right, let's go ahead and get into our setups for this week. We do have three on watch this week. Our first one here is going to be Disney. So it's pretty straightforward. We kind of been in a downtrend ever since that earnings gap down right here. We are now starting to break out of that. Really, we don't have a big breakout bar here just yet, but it's something to watch. So just the fact that it's poking out here makes me interested. It probably will need to get over this 921 EMA cloud as well. Once it starts getting over that, there is a lot of room up to the 50 SMA, or at least this 105.83 level right here, which is a structure low. So Disney, I'm going to be looking at calls. We have a positive MACD still. Our size not really giving us any hints of anything. It was oversold at this area, but it's kind of been grinding up since. So that's for Diz. It's pretty straightforward breaking out. I really would like to see some good volume or a good breakout candle here. Also a break over the one day 921 EMA and I can head up to 105s. So that's for Diz. Looking at calls, invalidation is pretty simple. Starts breaking under 99.25, the structure low. If you want to be more conservative, you could even stop out if it goes back within the downtrend. That's another way to look at it, but it's pretty straightforward. It's not really too far off the lows. So you probably could give it some room if it does fake out. You know, you could wait for it to break under this before stopping out. But either way, it filled this gap, breaking out a little bit. Definitely has been selling for a little bit. Maybe it's time for a pop. All right, number two, we're on to Unity Software. This has just been getting slammed all year. It's been an awful stock. It used to be a great stock, a great like high growth kind of volatile name to trade. And ever since it's really just been selling off. But now I'm starting to see some signs of a potential bottom. We have RSI kind of flattening out here. We have price making a lower low with RSI flattening out, making a higher low. That is a bullish divergence of some sort. If we even got rid of all of this and we went to the one week, we also have another low RSI. So this thing has just been getting slammed. So this is a little bit riskier, but I am looking at calls on this. Obviously, there's no bottom signal just yet. All we have to go off of was that divergence that we were just looking at. Divergence, we have kind of the RSI flattening out. We have price making a lower low with the RSI flattening out. That could be given a sign of some type of bounce coming. A quick dead cap bounce, maybe. Maybe up to $18. Overall, though, you are going against this 921 EMA cloud. Price will need to get back over that. For a real reverse or a real kind of trend form, we definitely want to see price getting over that 921 cloud, maybe even the 921 cloud flipping. So having the nine get back over the 21, crossing back to the upside, stuff like that. You want to see those signs, price making higher lows, higher highs. That is what we need to see. So this is kind of a bottom pick for now, a little bit riskier. And with riskier bottom picks like this, you want to buy far out. So probably August monthly's minimum right now for expiration on calls. But yeah, that's really it. You got an oversold one week RSI, also oversold RSI on the one day with RSI actually flattening out, making a higher low with price making a lower low. That is a bullish divergence of some sort. So that's for unity, looking at calls, buy far out, be careful. All right. And for our last individual set up here for individual tickers. I did want to keep another kind of put trade on standby just in case the market wants to go lower. Obviously with the indexes at the levels they're at, you want to be prepared for some type of hedge, some type of downside. And I feel like it's good to, you know, have a couple longs on watch, but also have a short on watch right now, just like eBay last week, even though it didn't play out, it's still good to have it on watch. And either way, it was a good breakdown setup that just didn't play out. So for BIC here, you can see this little timer right here. That means I set an alert. I drew my trend line. You have a test one, a test two, a test three, a test four bounce. All you do, right click it, you hit add alert, and we can even name it breakdown. So we'll name it breakdown. You can hit enter and there we go. And then once it breaks down here, you will get a trading view alert. Same thing as J&J &J last week. So if you set that J&J &J alert for the downtrend, you should have gotten alerted for that breakout and it ran pretty nice. Same thing with this, but we're looking for downside. And then obviously you have some sort of kind of rising wedge here. 
which is also a bearish pattern, but rising wedges do not confirm until you break down the uptrend line. You could always try to go short when it gets to the upper channel line and then, you know, trade down to the next trend line. But overall, for a confirmed rising wedge, you have to break down the upper trend line. So BAC, I am going to keep on standby for puts, but I do need to see that uptrend line breaking down. So for price targets, I have 38.35, which is this old backtest area. Also an old kind of double top resistance area, old breakout area. Also a big bounce area from the back test right here. So 38.35, pretty big level. It will need to break 38.35 in order to get down to 37. You could probably even mark this little wick low right here as well. I'd imagine that's probably a pretty important at 37.59. This right here, this is a big wick low. So under 38.35, you got 37.59. But overall, if you break this uptrend line, that can flush you down to the next. And then of course, this will have to break to get to the next. So that's for BAC, not confirmed yet, but we did right click it hit add alert and we have that on watch so we have named it breakdown in case it does want to break down and we'll have a put trade on our hands in case the market wants to pull back since we are kind of getting to frothy levels in the indexes and overall the market's just really been running crazy so that's my reasoning for having a put trade on standby but overall definitely like these little long setups here on Diz for a potential breakout also you looking like a pretty decent bottom pick a little bit riskier but overall looking pretty good all right now to the indexes the first we always cover is spy so last week we really just focused on this 54360s level which is this big resistance at the 1.618 Fibonacci level. And like I said, this 1.618 comes from this little measurement right here. I showed you pretty much every time, but just in case you are new and you don't get it, you take a Fibonacci tool, you start from this high, you go down to this low, make sure you have the 1.272, the 1.618, and you will get these levels. So that 1.618 was in focus last week. I didn't really have a good setup for anybody other than a potential dip buy at the 540 level or the you know the 539s this little structure low here but we did not dip down into that i did also mention you could maybe look for a put scout once it got back up here but overall it did not get a good rejection candle or really anything all it got was a big breakout you could have also scalped this once it pulled back into the 54360s this is a good kind of dip buy for friday had a nice little run off of that but overall i mean the only thing to trade here this week was this break out at 54360s. So it's basically the same thing this week. It will need to get back under 54360s to be bearish. It will need to break back under that in order to get back to the 539s. You just want to watch this level. It is kind of new support. So your new trading range is 54360s to that 550 area. That is your current trading range with also the potential for downside at 539 or you know 540 if you want to round it up if it breaks 543. So you got about three points downside if this level breaks. We're right now this is kind of a back test this gap down on spy is actually from a dividend it's not even from the market being bearish so that's the reason why it gapped down it wasn't because there's bad news or it was super bearish or anything it's because of that dividend and when you pay out a dividend price adjusts so yeah that's really it i mean there's really not too much going on on spy here i mean we are pulling into the one day 921 email cloud i really would be careful shorting into these you definitely don't want to just short into the 921 cloud because you can get caught in a higher low and bounce i've repeated this probably for the last two months you just got to be careful when the price is trending over the 921 cloud or you know, a 921 EMA, when price is trending over, you do not want to short into them. You want to wait for price to get under or you want to short on an extension over if there's a big gap between price and the 9 EMA, kind of like this. When we hit 550, there was a very big gap between the 9 and price. So that's really it. Same 543.61 in focus. It needs to either hold as support or if it flushes back under that, that does take you back down to 540. If it does break under that 543, I do kind of feel confident of a bigger flush just due to the fact that this gap is unfilled and you can maybe head back down to the 21 EMA. But overall, we are still holding higher lows holding up structure pretty well this is kind of a back test until further notice so 543.61 550.12 and also 540 as your nearby levels here on the short term all right in qqq we actually had a more clear and concise setup so there was kind of a ascending triangle i mentioned it still looked pretty bullish as long as this was holding which it did so here was friday here was first thing monday you could see it actually held up and that's when we ripped i could even go down to the 15 minutes a little bit more clean here's 
is the ascending triangle breakout right here at Heldar 478 back test area. So I mentioned that was a good res point to track that 478. And then you also have 471.75 as a structure low. So your trend line and also the 478 was really the only two things kind of important that was nearby. And we ended up holding that up and really just ripping to the upside. So that breakout of the 478 plus your higher low is holding it's a big kind of pressure cooker setup that's set up for that bigger breakout. So QQQ looked way better than SPY. NASDAQ just looked like it wanted to go higher, given it was holding the higher lows. And then SPY, I mean, didn't really look as good last week, but overall they both broke out. And this trend line kind of carried over all the way into Thursday. And once we broke it on Thursday right here, you can see this actually set us up for downside. So this trend line stayed valid all week. Hopefully, if you do trade the NASDAQ or the QQQ, you did draw this trend line that we had drawn out because it pretty much stayed relevant all throughout the week. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned you probably didn't want to go short the market or short the NASDAQ until this broke. And maybe you did catch a nice little put scalp once this broke. So we can go ahead and get rid of this now since it already you know, had the breakout. It broke down the trend line. And right now our levels of focus are the same. We have 478.39. That is kind of support. So if it dips down into that, you can look for call scalps off of that. Obviously, if it breaks back under that, that is inviting more sellers. It'll probably head back down to 471. You also have a new resistance point at 486. You kind of have a double top here. You also have a little structure low here at 483. And this is kind of your nearby structures at the moment. In terms of the one day moving averages, we probably do need to come down just a little bit to catch back up to them. You can see we're still kind of just a little bit over that, but overall we are still holding the uptrend. You could even wait for it to dip, wait for it to get back down into the 921 combo. That could be a better dip buy. But right now, I definitely still would watch that 478. Obviously, there's not really any big like one day levels nearby to watch. That's why we kind of have to go down to the shorter term time frames to kind of see our structures. And right now we have 486. We got the 483 and also 478, 39 as your structures. So we really had to zoom down to find these because if you went down to the one day, you're really not going to find anything like this. Like this is a good structure. We have a little gap right here so that's a good structure as well but overall really no big like supports nothing crazy on the one day and that's why we need to go down to the shorter term time frames for right now so yeah i don't really see a specific setup on the qqq or the spy at the moment unfortunately it's probably why this section is so boring this week but you definitely want to mark the levels that we mark same thing as last week i mean if you had that 1.618 kind of programmed out you could have traded that breakout obviously if you try to put scalp off of it off the resistance you would have gotten stopped out but then you could have flipped long we also had that nice little trend line drawn out set up for that breakout also a nice little breakdown on the trend line over here thursday so definitely just mark the things that i have marked and kind of keep them on watch maybe you can find some setups in the future hopefully it's still helpful obviously i don't really have like a pattern on spire qqq for you for you this week but hopefully in the future we'll have some more so basically your must hold is the 478 on the QQQ and your must hold on the SPY is your 543.50, you know, maybe just 543 in general. So as long as those are still holding, I really feel pretty good about the market holding up could keep going higher but if that flushes and the seasonality is kind of suggesting that we could see a little bit of downside you're definitely probably going to see lower levels back down you know lower 470s on qqq uh, about 540 on spy so that's basically it like i said must hold 478 on nasdaq spy 543s all right and on to the vix for our last piece of the analysis nothing really changed from last week so we closed here last friday at 1264 we closed here at 1319 just a little bit higher this week so all this last week did really was prove my point of 1237 and 1182s being really good lows, especially that 1237. I mean, it just totally ripped off the 1237 here, and that set us up for a little pullback in the market. Oh, and also look where it rejected off of on Friday here at 1367. And that just proves my point again. You want to mark these one day levels on the VIX that I have, especially if you're trading VIX with the SPY and you're using VIX to kind of figure out how to trade the SPY or what SPY trades to take. You definitely want to mark these. Because even on the shorter term time frames, they really kind of respect them as you see right here, as you see right here. And these have been kind of dragging out for months. I mean, these these levels are pretty old. Like this one is from December 2023. This is a multi-bottom low here from early 2024. This 1367 is all the way from March and it still stays valid to this day. I mean, you just see it 
It respects it. So the most important thing for this week, if you want to see downside in the market, and I say that because these lows are holding so good and it's not giving up, that kind of makes me think that we could be setting up for a VIX pop and a pullback in the market. Since these lows don't want to give up, you need that signal over 1367. It's very important. You want to see a close over it. And even if we got over 1367, we still have the 50 SMA in the way and also the 200 SMA right here, which is resistance right here so we need to get over those that's probably gonna take roughly maybe vix getting over 15 because you can see the high here on vix is actually at 1488 so we'll call it 15 we want to see vix closing over 15 for a real volatility signal so that close over 15 will really set us up for the 20s and so on and so forth but right now your short-term focus is definitely just 1367 if you can get that close over 1367, that could set you up for a bigger push through the moving averages. Maybe it won't reject them if we can get that close over the 1367. Right now, we don't have that. We have a rejection off of it, but we do finally have two closes over the 921 EMA cloud, the 921 EMA combo. So the fact that we are closing over this 921 EMA combo is pretty nice. That could be setting us up for a little push up into the next moving averages. So yeah, nothing's really changed. I mean, the 1237 has been holding, 1182 is holding. Oh my God, look at this. Here's Tuesday. Look at directly off 1237. This is like months old. Here it is again. Once price got back over, really big wick off of it right here. And that's directly off the 1237. So definitely mark these guys. If you are day trading the SPY, like if you want to see SPY going lower and you don't see these VIX levels giving up, that could be setting you up for a pullback in the market and volatility go higher. Likewise, if you want to go long and you see VIX rejecting this aggressive level at 1367, that could set you up for a bounce play or along to the upside. So it's as simple as that. That 1237 and at 1367, those are kind of volatility extreme points and they could be giving you really good trades on the SPY. But yeah, that's really it. Nothing's changed. Like I said, you want to see that close over the 1367. If it gets over that, you want to see a close over 15 overall. I really would like to see the close over 15. That would definitely make me a little bit more bearish. And then, like I said, you have the 200 SMA and also the 50 SMA in the way. If we can get over those as well, that would be huge. But for right now, you know, wait for that close over 1367 before getting too excited. Could also look at puts again if, you know, the market pulls back into 1237 and the 1182s. That makes hedging even cheaper if it gets down here. So I'm sorry I don't have too much to offer for you on SPY and QQQ this week. There's really no pattern for me to go off of. We're kind of just in a melt-up pattern still. I did give you that SPY 543 as your main support, your QQQ 478s. So definitely watch those. Those are kind of the must-holds. If those flush, you probably will see a VIX pop. Maybe it can get over 1367. I really would like to get over that. That is a short-term volatility signal. That sets you up to 15. And then at 15, you have to wait and just kind of see how that goes. Because that is a really big kind of rejection point. So take it one level at a time. If you get the close over 1367, you start looking for the 15. You wait for the 15, see how that does. And then you keep moving forward. And then obviously the VIX really helps me know when I want to go long the SPY. So this is kind of a pro tip. I usually don't go long the SPY. Like I don't buy SPY 30 plus days out until we get a move on the VIX. It's a little bit higher because once volatility gets up to here, that just means once volatility sells off, it's going to be way more aggressive. But if you're trying to go long the SPY when the VIX is down here, the VIX could just rip back up. So you want to see VIX coming up a little bit higher. Like when the VIX is high, it's time to buy. When the VIX is low, take it slow. So that's kind of my tip on trading indexes and using the VIX. You want to go long when the VIX is a little bit higher because that means a volatility could sell off more aggressively. And that means your bounce will be way more aggressive to the upside and it'll even maybe pay out quicker. Like if you went long here on May 30th and you waited for volatility to get higher, this next day, the VIX went down 10%. This means the market rallied very aggressively and you would have made a lot of money if you waited for VIX to get a little bit higher and then it sells off aggressively as such. That's going to pay out huge. So that's just one way to go about it. That's why I've kind of been hesitant about going along the SPY since, you know, volatility has been so low. But once it starts getting a little bit higher, you probably will see me more willing to buy 30 plus days on SPY. And I'll let you know if I'm going to start looking at SPY calls for a swing or QQQ calls for a swing. Once I get volatility up to where I want it, I will do that. I will go along the indexes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and get this chopped up, sent out, all that good stuff. Getting a little bit late. I don't want get this out too late so you guys can see it before monday morning 
So I love you and I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge.